Once a week, every Sunday, I'll be sending out a challenge to my email list and patrons to test you and your knowledge. These tasks should take no more than an hour of your time and is a good way to practice without just copying and pasting. If you want to join these challenges, sign up for my email listing, which is free, or join my Patreon. Link is down below. So in this challenge, uh, our main objective here was to essentially create a stealth mode where it kind of gives that effect as if I'm stealthy, right? So in this video, we'll be exploring how we do that using two concepts. The first concept will be exploring the Area 2D, and the second concept will be exploring the Color Palette, or Palette, however you want to say it. Okay, so in order to do this, we have to have some sort of player thing. Uh, I'll let you to figure that out. Now, the main idea of this is inside of our player, we will have an Area 2D. Uh, I've renamed it to Stealth, and essentially all we have are two signals that connect it, a Stealth uh, Enter, so body enter and a body exited. Now, if this does happen, right? So if my stealth area does touch something, and in this case, I'm going to look for a slime specifically. In my player script, you can see here that I'm going to check for a slime specifically. Now, there's many, many ways to figure out what sort of body you're using. Uh, you can, of course, use groups. I do encourage grouping. Uh, grouping is probably one of the best ways to do this, uh, especially because let's say you don't want to touch a monster, right? Let's say you want to touch a block or one specific type of thing. Then you can group all those objects into that one group. Now, in our script, in order to color this, we just call the modulate. Now, the modulation is where we can color this. Now, I'm using a hex coloring. So let's take a look at what this would look like. So in my player, I'm essentially taking my icon here. And in my inspector, I'm going into the modulate and essentially modulating things to be a slightly different color. Now, I'm essentially shading him to be a little grayer, right? So I think uh, the numbers I used were, I believe, 100, 100. And for the A, which is the kind of see-through, I lower that just a tiny bit, maybe I think to 150. And I will get this hexa number. I can just copy this into my script. And yeah, they, there you go. Those are the same numbers. So that is how you kind of create your own modulation, right? So if you wanted to change these numbers, you can see that the hex number is changing. Uh, and the, mo the A right here, I would suggest you play around with that. That's kind of a see-through effect. And it does uh, kind of create a cool effect with our game, right? So definitely play around with that. And that is how you create the hex effect, right? So by default, though, Everything is set to 2555, et cetera, and FFFF. Now, do keep in mind, for some reason, I'm not sure why, uh, but if you try copying this into the script here, this doesn't actually work. It needs to be, uh, I believe, 8 uh, long or 10 long, something like that. Uh, so if you actually copy this and you try it, you can, we can take a look at what happens. It actually turns blue for some reason. Uh, and it's just kind of the way Godot does it. Uh, so let's add our three Fs again. Or might be two. We'll see if it errors. Nope. So there you go. Now we have all the proper coloring, and that's how we do it. So that's our stealth effect.